This has been one of the most fun projects I've worked on in quite a while. It's highly customizable and it's fully articulating and it's really not that bad to make. So this video will try to be a rather quick run through of how you can construct this. I promise it's not as complicated as it looks. The main idea here is to make a fully positionable spotlight that has about 1.21 giga configurations and it's surprisingly strong. Right now it's just mounted on this temporary 2x4 so it's kind of wobbly but later on it will be installed permanently up there from the ceiling on that brace for the garage door. Yes, there's a ton of stuff going on here, but it's really not that bad if we break it down into simpler parts. So let's look at it first at its most basic. It's mostly just a bunch of these. And what these are, are just overlapping fingers that by themselves, just one or two of them are not that strong really. But when we use sets of three of them like this, it applies a bunch of surface area, a bunch of surface friction that makes them really strong. And if you want them to be even stronger, you just add more and then make the bolts a little longer. So again, the main idea here is friction. The more friction there is, the less the crane's arm wants to go. First thing you'll need to do is rip down some plywood. Here I'm using something like a three ply underlayment. It's about a quarter of an inch thick. I rip them into strips an inch and a half wide. The next few operations can be done around three at a time. So first we'll go to the miter saw. Here we set a stop. Stop is set at three and a half inches. And this thing allows me to keep my fingers back away. Cut and then take your three and a half inch pieces over to the drill press where we will again work three at a time against a stop and drill holes out that are three quarters of an inch from all three sides. So this hole is centered on its width and three quarters of an inch away from its end. And that goes on both ends of every piece and it also applies to even larger pieces in the same way. These long pieces here and here are six inches long. Other than that, they're built exactly the same way. This top one for attaching to a two x four is a little bit different and I'll get to that a little bit later. Assembly of the individual parts is pretty straightforward. You line up the holes as best as you can and you just stuff a bolt through it. The socket driver will really help the process go a lot faster. Next, I use a little piece of PEX tubing and a nut knob. This little piece of pipe keeps my fingers out away so that I can get a better hold on the knob. And somebody asks every time what a nut knob is, so let's make one. Step one, step two, and step three. All the way until it's flat. For cutting these little spacers, just draw a couple of holes that these will fit into and then you can cut right against the piece of wood. Coping saw, hacksaw, band saw, you can even sand them flat right there. That will give you a nice, consistent, and easy to make spacer. You'll notice that the links are all rounded and there's two reasons for this. One is so that they don't bind in the middle and the other is so that they don't pinch you or hurt your hands. In order to do this, if you put a circle on it like this, make a setup like this, and then just take it over to the sander. Assuming, of course, that you have a sander, but you can try some variation like this. Something just so that you hug the, t the side of that circle. Another thing, alignment of the holes 
if they're if they vary a little bit along their length or width, that's okay so long as the whole spacing is consistent. So make a sandwich of them like this, drive a pin through it. If it's tight, use a socket driver like this. And if the second hole doesn't align, stick them in the vise and ram a drill bit through them. Drilling out the second hole, or drilling out both holes, and reaming them out nice will ensure that you can get a pin through them every single time. The most complicated part to make is this thing right here. It's a switch. What it does is it changes the axis of rotation from this way to this way. There are two of them in this example because there's another one right here. It allows the lamp to move this way or this way. It's possible to make an axis switch that's really simple like this one but it only touches in two places. So it doesn't really get the friction that we want. What we're going to do is make one that uses six identical parts. And to do that, we'll use the sled. This part is just three slots. And so the stop block on your left does both the left and the right of the center notch. And then the stop block on your right, it takes care of one side of the remaining two notches. Then, in order to get what's left, you'll need a spacer, and the spacer is just two pieces of plywood. It will take you some tinkering to get the setup correct, but once it's all in place, you can cut three at a time. Of course, these assemblies can be glued together. I have not done that yet. And in fact, all of the footage that you're going to see right now was taken before these have been glued. If I were watching this for the first time, the question I would be asking is, is it strong? Well, that depends. <laughs> Relative to what? Yes, it's pretty strong. And if this isn't sufficient, you can just add more links. The thicker the sandwich, the more friction and the more it'll support. But this is a pretty heavy bulb. And the best thing about this is that when you take this entire assembly off, it's incredibly lightweight because it's just quarter inch plywood. Is this entirely practical? No, <laughs> not even close. Uh, but it, like I said, it's fun. Before we're finished here, there's also the lamp and the wiring to discuss. But before we get to that, let's move up to the top and take a look at that. There are a few important things to note here. First of all, this center bolt has nothing to do with the way that the arm bends. Its only purpose is to provide a place to put these spacers in so that this part can get more surface area friction. The spacers simply bind against this 2x4 just through the weight of the arm as it presses down. And tightening this center nut makes it squeeze really tight against the 2x4. By the way, the whole spacing on these 6 inch pieces is 2 inches center to center, just like in the smaller parts. As a general rule, as you move from top to bottom, you can use fewer and fewer strips, and that's because there's less and less of a leverage force that's being applied to it as you move down. At the very tail end, the least that I used was 3, and even that's sufficient. It's nice to have the option to use different kinds of light bulbs. And so I used a socket like this that is inserted into a piece of solid wood. 
I'm sure at this point you can probably figure out how to make one of these if you have to. To hold the electrical wiring in place, just until somebody invents wireless electricity, I made these little clips. And they're just from little chain like this, which I'm pretty sure is from fluorescent lighting. Filming a glue up makes it that much worse, but at least in this case, I don't have to use any clamps. Messy as usual, it's always the case with box joint like glue ups. You know what? It's psychological. It feels as though there's so much at stake, but somehow I always survive glue ups. What I did was just use the scrap to kind of drag the glue away. And in doing so, it even, even fills in the little cracks that are left from the glue up process. Here, look. I used a toothpick. Just pull out the excess. Works pretty well. A switch and a receptacle would be nice when I feel like spending the time on it. But for now, this will do nicely. Now that it's mounted on something a little more secure, it's a lot more stable. If you found value in this video, I invite you to let me know it. I love hearing from you. And if not, <laughs> then try this video.